So in this video, we are gonna see nth derivative of some functions. So let's consider a function. Now the function is y equal to log of ax plus b. Now to find out the nth derivative of this, we will use one approach that is we will find out the first derivative that is y1 from y1 we will find the second derivative that is y2 then from y2 we will find the third derivative that is y3 and from the answers of y1 y2 and y3 we will predict that what could be the value of yn so let's proceed so y1 here is nothing but 1 upon ax plus b into a now I can rewrite this term as a into ax plus b raised to minus 1. Now let's find out what is y2. So y2 is nothing but a as it is. This will become minus 1 ax plus b raised to minus 2 into a again. Next y3. Okay, before finding y3, we will rewrite this as a square into minus 1 into ax plus b raised to minus 2. Now, let's find out y3 from the answer of y2. So, a square as it is, minus 1 as it is, since it is a constant. Now, the derivative of this is minus 2 into ax plus b raised to minus 3 into a. So this term will become a cube into minus 1 minus 2 into ax plus b raised to minus 3. Now let's rewrite this in a standard format. So this will become a cube into minus 1 the whole square because here we are getting minus sign 2 times into 1 into 2 into ax plus b raised to minus 3. So let's, so let's predict the value of y n. Now if you will observe in y1 we were having a raised to 1, in y2 we were having a square, in y3 we were having a cube, so hence in y n we will get a raised to n. Next in y1 we were not having any minus 1 raised to term. It means we were having the term minus 1 raised to 0. In y2, we got minus 1 raised to 1. In y3, we got minus 1 raised to 2. So every time we are getting the power 1 less than the value of the derivative. So in nth derivative, I will get minus 1 raised to n minus 1. Next, in y3, we got 1 into 2. In y2, we just got 1. So, when I will find y4, I got this series as 1 into 2 into 3. So, for yn, I will got this series as 1 into 2 into 3 till n minus 1. And the last term is ax plus b. Let's observe the power. So, in case of y3, the power was minus 3. In case of y2, the power was minus 2. So similarly, in case of y1, yn, we will get power as minus n. Now, let's rewrite this. So therefore, yn will become a raised to n minus 1 raised to n minus 1. Now, this term is nothing but the factorial of n minus 1. And this term will go in the denominator and this will become ax plus b raised to n. And this is the formula for nth derivative of log of ax plus b. Now this formula is very useful to find out nth derivative of logarithmic function. And we will see more examples on this where we will apply the formula. Now let's see one more function. Now the y is e raised to ax sine of bx plus c. So to find out the nth derivative we will start with y1 again. So here the y1 is derivative of this term. 
here we are having two functions so I will use the formula u by v sorry we will use the formula u into v so by using the formula u into v we will get e raised to ax that is u as it is derivative of this is cos of vx plus c into b plus v term as it is that is sine of bx plus c as it is derivative of e raised to ax is e raised to ax into a now from these two terms we will get e raised to ax as constant and inside bracket we will get b into cos of bx plus c plus a into sin of bx plus c now if we'll try to find out y2 from this value of y1 then this function will exceed and we will get some more terms and hence it will become very difficult to predict the value of yn and to make it very easier we will use some other approach and here I draw one circle so and here I draw one triangle so by using the method of triangle we can very easily find out the value of yn so let's assume that this side is a this side is b and this is a right angle triangle so I can say that this hypotenuse is nothing but root of a square plus b square now let's assume this angle as phi so can I say that cos phi that is adjacent side upon hypotenuse and sin phi that is opposite side upon hypotenuse so now I will use these two formulas to find out the value of y n so for that reason I will multiply and divide this value of y1 by root of a square plus b square so this will become e raised to ax into root of a square plus b square inside bracket b upon root of a square plus b square into cos of bx plus c plus a upon root of a square plus b square into sine of bx plus c now from here we can say that b upon root of a square plus b square is nothing but sin phi this is cos of bx plus c as it is next a upon this is nothing but cos phi and sin of bx plus c as it is also if you will try to find out tan phi from this then we can get the tan phi as b by a and since as it is root of a square plus b square we will assume it as r so here we get r because root of a square plus b square we are assuming it as r so again rewriting this e raised to x into r here we are getting a formula sin a into cos b plus cos a into sin b that is sin of a plus b and we will get bx plus c plus phi and that is the value of y1 so after finding y1 we got this phi extra now if i'll try to find out y2 from this y1 then that time in the bracket i will get the term 2 phi similarly i will get one more r outside the bracket so this will become r square and e raised to ax will remain as it is so hence if i'll try to find out y n from this then we will get it as e raised to ax r raised to n because in case of y2 we are getting r square in case of y1 we are getting r and inside the bracket we will get sin of bx plus c plus n times phi and this becomes the formula for nth derivative of e raised to ax into sin of bx plus c thank you